Let's go to our justice correspondent, Jessica Schneider. Jessica, State Department official George Kent will testify publicly next week. And tonight, we're getting a taste of what he'll say. That's exactly right, Wolf. And if his public testimony is anything like what he said in private, we will hear strong words from George Kent next week. Kent's transcribed testimony really ripped into Rudy Giuliani, saying that Giuliani used a campaign of lies and slander against the former ambassador to Ukraine. And Kent also said he believed there was a quid pro quo when it came to promising a White House visit, but not necessarily military aid, on Ukraine announcing investigations into the Bidens. Tonight, the full extent of Rudy Giuliani's influence is coming into focus with the release of Deputy Assistant Secretary of State George Kent's testimony transcript. Kent detailing what he called a campaign of lies orchestrated by Giuliani that led to the ousting of U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine Marie Ivanovich. Kent also recalled a conversation he had about Trump's July 25th call with Ukrainian President Zelensky, saying that Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman, the top Ukraine expert at the White House, felt uncomfortable by the call, adding he said that he could not share the majority of what was discussed because of the very sensitive nature of what was discussed. The testimony transcript comes as the spotlight of the impeachment inquiry has turned to Vice President Mike Pence for the first time. His top national security aide, the first from his staff to go behind closed doors and answer lawmakers' questions. Jennifer Williams was one of nearly a dozen officials listening to Trump's July 25th phone call. A source says she testified that she found the conversation to be unusual because it was political in nature, but did not raise those concerns to her supervisors. Williams, though, could clarify what the vice president knew about plans to withhold military aid in exchange for Ukraine announcing investigations into the 2016 election and the Bidens, which Pence was asked about today. The president's focus has been, as my focus was in my meetings with President Zelensky, on supporting President Zelensky's efforts to deal with a historic pattern of corruption in Ukraine. As for Trump's call with Zelensky, which clearly shows him asking the Ukrainian leader to look into the Bidens, Pence mimicked the president's talking point. You know, the American people have the transcript of the president's call, and they can see there was no quid pro quo, and the president did nothing wrong. But questions continue about Pence's interactions with the Ukrainian president. On September 1st, Pence replaced President Trump on a trip to Poland, where he held a bilateral meeting with Zelensky. Pence has insisted the two did not discuss an investigation to the Bidens, but has acknowledged military aid and corruption were on the agenda. In all of my discussions uh, with President Zelensky, we focused exclusively on President Zelensky's efforts to, to end corruption, uh, in Ukraine and also enlist more European support. While Williams was cooperating, former National Security Advisor John Bolton was a no-show on Capitol Hill, despite being invited to testify today. Democrats never issued a subpoena for his appearance, as they have with other witnesses, and Bolton's lawyer previously said he wouldn't testify without one. Meanwhile, House Republicans are lining up a list of witnesses they want at the public hearings next week. Top on that list, the whistleblower. This is the guy who started it all. Uh, we think he should um, sit in front of us under oath, answer our questions, and um, do that in, in person. Democrats, though, have the ultimate say when it comes to which witnesses will testify publicly. Now, as for George Kent, he will testify publicly on Wednesday when he could elaborate on the testimony that was released today that he was told how extensive Giuliani's influence on the president was, and that could add another voice to the case that Giuliani manipulated U.S. foreign policy for President Trump's political benefit. Wolf, of course, that being key to the impeachment inquiry. Very significant development indeed. Thanks very much, Jessica Schneider, for that report. Uh, also tonight, there are new signs that Democrats are fast-tracking impeachment, looking to wrap things up uh, in the House of Representatives by Christmas. Let's bring in our congressional reporter, Lauren Fox. So, Lauren, so what are Democrats doing right now to streamline the process, and can it really be done before a year's end? Well, that's the big question right now, Wolf. But I will tell you, things on Capitol Hill, they're speeding up. We are moving into this public phase of this impeachment inquiry with public hearings next week, including testimony from George Kent, Bill Taylor, and former U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Ivanovich. All of that comes next week. Then we could see more public hearings the, last, the next week after that. But I will tell you, Adam Schiff, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, has been very clear. Despite the fact they've heard from more than a dozen interviews behind closed doors, they don't need to hear 
hear from everyone in public. So a couple weeks of public testimony, then we will move into the Thanksgiving recess. After that, there will give time for the Intelligence Committee staffers in coordination with Foreign Affairs and Oversight to draft their full report on what their investigation has found. Then things in December move over to the House Judiciary Committee. They could have public hearings, and then they will draft articles of impeachment after that. Those articles could go to the floor of the House of Representatives as early as the week of December 16th. Steny Hoyer, the House whip, already making it clear they have to be here potentially to deal with a funding deadline. Yes, there is another funding deadline potentially coming in December, depending on what they do with the CR in November. So, Wolf, that gives you a sense of the timeline they're working on, but things could be wrapped up potentially by Christmas. Wolf. As you know, Lauren, Republicans are calling uh, on the whistleblower uh, to testify. Will Democrats let that happen? Well, the House of Representatives, as they move forward into the public stage of this impeachment inquiry, Republicans have an opportunity to request witnesses, yes. However, the Democratic chairman and the full committee has an opportunity to stop Republicans from getting all the witnesses they would want. And, of course, Adam Schiff has been very clear. He does not want to publicly oust the whistleblower. Instead, what he wants to do is protect that person so you can guarantee that Democrats are not interested in a public hearing where the whistleblower would have to come before the American people. That is something Something they have been guarding against as Republicans have amped up the calls to hear from that person. Wolf. All right, Lauren, thanks very much. Lauren Fox up on Capitol Hill. As Democrats press ahead with impeachment, President Trump is attacking new reporting about his reaction to this entire Ukraine scandal. Our White House correspondent, Boris Sanchez, is joining us. Uh, Boris, the president is pushing back on reports that he asked the Attorney General, Bill Barr, to hold a news conference that would clear his name on Ukraine. What are you learning? That's right, Wolf. According to a source, President Trump had been having discussions with aides about having Bill Barr go before cameras and declare him totally innocent of any wrongdoing in his phone call with President Zelensky of Ukraine. The president apparently feeling that it would help him with messaging, that it would make him look more innocent. This reporting was initially in the Washington Post, and apparently, according to the Post, Trump has been lamenting to aides that Barr didn't hold that press conference the president today lashed out about these reports on Twitter, uh, effectively saying that the Washington Post made up the story. It's clearly gotten under his skin. Take a look. Uh, the president at one point writing that Bill Barr did not decline my request to talk about Ukraine, also adding that the Justice Department already ruled that the call was good. An important clarification here, Wolf. The DOJ did put out a statement saying that prosecutors found that the president didn't uh, commit any campaign finance violations, but it was not broader than that, Wolf. Important point, uh, Boris. Thank you very much. Uh, let's discuss uh, with Congressman Denny Heck. He's a Democrat, serves on the Intelligence Committee that's taking the lead in the impeachment investigation. Congressman, thanks so much for joining us. And I want to quickly get to the breaking news. The, the State Department diplomat, George Kent, testifying that Rudy Giuliani was involved in what Kent calls, and I'm quoting him now, a campaign of lies. Do you have evidence that President Trump directed this, or, or was Giuliani simply going rogue? Rudy Giuliani was the president's lawyer, Wolf. It reminds me a little bit. It's highly reminiscent of the situation with Michael Cohen, who was the president's lawyer, or then candidate Trump's lawyer, who is in prison now for violation of federal law. And as a matter of fact, it was the president who was identified as individual one in the indictment procedure. So in that case, obviously, there was a coordination between the president's personal lawyer and himself. In this case, look, here's what I want to say about Rudy Giuliani's campaign. What level of moral depravity does it take to engage in an insidious and long-term campaign to character assassinate and destroy the reputation and the career of somebody who is as much of a patriot as Ambassador Yovanovitch was. 33 years in the State Department with the progressive responsibilities, not only widely respected, but beloved because of her professionalism and her integrity. And according to this testimony in the transcript today, uh, uh, that effort to uh, degrade, uh, to undermine the then U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine, Mar Marie Yovanovitch, uh, was coordinated between Giuliani and these two individuals, Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman, both of whom Giuliani associates who have in recent days been charged with federal crimes. Yeah, Giuliani is Trump. Trump is Giuliani. We'll see how all that plays out. But the fact of the matter is that's just one of the pieces here. You know, we have all these other uh, bits of evidence. In fact, there's a mountain of evidence. As a matter of fact, 
there is more evidence to suggest that the president did the deed, that he did seek to coerce Ukraine into a politically motivated prosecution, threatened to withhold vital military assistance to a strategic partner and ally of us, then there is evidence to support the idea that the sun will rise in the east tomorrow morning. The earlier discussion was about whether or not this is proceeding too much apace. I have to tell you that there are an awful lot of people saying, what's holding you back from getting there, given all the evidence that you already have?